Let's talk about reamer prints. Now, uh, I apologize that I left this out of my last video when I was talking with Terry, uh, but maybe it's better that it's its own video anyway. I'm not going to cover what every single dimension on this ringer, uh, reamer print means. You know, to be honest, I don't even understand all of it. Uh, I know what I need to understand in order to create a reamer that works for me. Uh, I leave the rest of it up to my gunsmith and JGS. If you have questions with JGS, you can go to their website or you can see here their numbers up here in the corner. They are incredibly good people to work with and they are very patient at explaining what any of this means if you have a question. But let me cover the things that you're going to need to really know when you're talking to your gunsmith about what you want or if he's explaining to you or telling you a couple pretty normal things or if you're out at the range and you hear people talking. So the first thing is the caliber. Now on a reaper print, there's going to be a caliber name up here. I just made this one up because, well, to be honest, I don't want my actual caliber name shown and it's underneath this. But we're just going to call this caliber 284 Wiz Thumper. Now the name of it's here. It's also going to show up in the description and it's going to show up down here. Let me use my arrow here. So we've got the name here, we've got the name here, and then we've got the name down here uh, so that you won't forget. Uh, the designer of the reamer is here, uh, and they'll put in the name. So if you if you call them or if your gunsmith calls or whatever, they'll put the name in here. And something to know about different reamer manufacturers. Now, this is a JGS reamer. Their tolerances are plus uh, five thousandths only. Uh, so as you heard in the video with Terry, they are not a plus or minus tolerance. It is strictly an at or over five thousandths variance. So that's important to remember uh, because different reamer manufacturers will have different tolerances. Uh, okay, so let's look at the first thing uh, that we've talked about. And this is this 2000 line or this 200 line, depending on what you call it. You'll see that the arrow points to this line. So we're looking at this number here and it is um, pointing right here. And that is the measure of 2000s from the uh, the base of the web, 200 thousandths up. And in my particular case, this is uh, 501. And this is my actual reamer that I use. So, you know, for whatever it's worth, this is how all my barrels are chambered. So my 200 line is 501. And, you know, I'd say that's probably within the range of being average. This is, however, one of those things that we talked about that will lead to bolt click depending on how you are sizing your brass compared to what this chamber size is and you need to make sure that this is matching up so this is a number that's important if somebody asks you or you see a print or whatever you're going to need to know what the 200 line is compared to how your sizing uh, dies are made or bought the next thing is your shoulder angle. Your shoulder angle is this dimension right here. You can see it has this line coming off it as if to indicate an angle. It is then measured at 35 degrees. This is a 284 caliber that has a 35 degree shoulder. There are, however, uh, 284 calibers that have a 40 degree shoulder. Uh, and there are plenty of other calibers that you know are 25, 30, 35, 40. Uh, just a lot of it's caliber dependent. Certain calibers tend to fall within certain shoulder angles, but it's important to know what the shoulder angle is uh, if somebody asks you. The next thing is free bore, which is indicated by this number right here, this 220. And you can see on, on here, it's measuring uh, from this dimension to this dimension. And that is going to be your free bore listed. And my free bore happens to be 220. Again, very caliber and personal specific. Uh, I've shot free bores anywhere from 180 to 250 uh, for a seven cal, a seven mil, 284 caliber uh, rounds. Uh, and again, your lead or free bore here is going to be very dependent upon uh, the bullet that you're choosing. And I'll give you a good example. Uh, this is 220 based on shooting a 180 or 184, 284 bullet. If I was shooting the 190 grain bullets from Berger, I would really probably want to be out to 250, uh, which is, you know, not as 30 thousandths longer. Um, and that's a decent amount. But to give you a, an even better example, if I was switching to 190 grain uh, A tips from Hornady, 
instead of a 250 free bore, I would, I would really want to be at somewhere around 325 free bore. And that's simply because the bullets are so much longer. They're about 50 something thousandths longer uh, based to ogive than uh, a comparable burger bullet's going to be. So it's really important to know and, and discuss with your gunsmith or JGS what bullets you are going to use because that can have a massive effect. Now, uh, your free bore can be extended if you, like, let's say I was going to shoot a longer bullet and I'm like, hey, I really wish I had 250 or 290 or 320 or whatever. Uh, you can ream that number out, but it becomes a lot less uh, repeatable to the next time you do it because there is a little bit of variance as opposed to having a reamer that is designed to cut that free bore. So uh, sometimes if you're playing around with a bullet, you might say, hey, can you take it out 50 thousandths or something like that? And then if you like the way it works, you could then call JGS and say, well, uh, I need to get this, this reamer uh, either recut or remade uh, with 270 freeboard, 280, whatever you want. So anyway, there is that. And then we have the neck diameter. And traditionally, I am only looking at this number because I don't do any kind of tapered necks. And, and you heard Terry talk about that. So the one thing you do want to make sure is that you'll see these numbers here and they indicate different points across the neck. If you ended up with numbers that change, so this is 320 to 320 to 320, that tells me this is a straight neck uh, reamer cut. And if for some reason this was like 300 or 290 or 350 or something weird, uh, I would want to make sure why I have an angle in my neck uh, and that it's supposed to be there. Now, there are some calibers that are designed that way, so you need to know. But the reality is with a lot of the calibers like 6.5, 6s, uh, Creedmoors, uh, 284s, Wisms, whatever you're shooting within a lot of the normal disciplines, whether it's PRS or uh, F-Class, they are going to be a straight wall neck here. Uh, and, you know, and that's that's pretty much it. Now, there's some other dimensions you can look at um, that you know, are all across here and they all have a different effect. But, you know, I'm just trying to keep this really simple and, and let you know that you want to look at your 200 line, your shoulder angle, your neck diameter, and your free bore. If you can just understand and know what these are doing for you and why they're being ordered and, and why there can be an effect to uh, how your, your reloading process and your shooting is affected, that's really a great place to start. And, and again, if you want to know more, um, you know, we might look at doing a more in-depth reamer print read with my gunsmith and he can explain some of these other numbers and why they matter. But I will just tell you as a competitor who has rifles and, 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 you know, three, four, five barrels a year chambered up. And I've had, I think three reamers made by JGS. These are really the only numbers that really matter to me. So anyway, hope this helps you guys out. Have a good one. We'll talk later.